Welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be part three of the Hemi swap. Okay, so now we got the engine running. You've seen that in the last video. Now we need to go ahead and clean this firewall up. I got to mount the computer. So I went ahead and moved this factory fuse box over a little bit. We'll figure out what we're going to do about a reservoir later. I really don't have to have that. And there really ain't a whole lot of room. If I stand the computer up, ain't enough room to shut the hood. So I'm going to have to mount the computer a little bit of an angle. So it looks like I'll be able to fit it right here if I put it at an angle. So I built this bracket to mount the computer. And I welded those three bolts on there. That way the computer will have a good place to mount to. So I'm going to have to notch this area out and make a way to mount that. So I already had to notch it down here for this fuse box. And there's still plenty of room between that and the engine. So all I did is take some angle iron and a flat piece of metal and weld all that together. So I got the computer mounted. Had to put it at a little bit of an angle. That way it will clear the hood rod. So that's now mounted. Uh, very sturdy. So now we need to go ahead and mount our battery tray. Okay, so I originally was going to put the battery on this side. But they really just ain't enough room with all these other fuse boxes. And I had to have somewhere to put the cold air intake and it actually fits right here. Originally I had the cold air intake on this side. Ain't enough room to clear the radiator hoses. So the battery's gonna have to be on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it where I need it. So I got one fuse box mounted. I went ahead and used the factory piece that come off the Grand Cherokee. And I cut it just a little bit and I've got it bolted down. So now I need to mount this fuse box. So I'm gonna make some kind of metal bracket to hold it down. I need to make something so I can go ahead and mount the code air intake. I went ahead and put the grill back on. Everything seems to fit good, not rubbing anywhere. And then I still need to notch this hood brace out. That way I'll be able to close the hood all the way. So as you can see, there's two places there that the hood's hitting. So I'm probably gonna go a little bit wider. I'll make a mark and I'll try to cut those off. I think I'll cut it about right there. Then I'll probably go over about there. And I'll try to leave that. And I may get some seam sealer or I might even try to spot weld that back. But for now, I'm gonna cut it out of the way. Okay, so with the cover on, looks like it's still hitting on this side, right here on this edge. So I'm gonna cut a little bit more over. I'm trying to cut about as much as I did on this side. All right, so I don't think it's hitting anywhere now. So now I can completely shut the hood. So later on, I'll make something to fill these holes in and try to clean that up and make it look better. Then I'll probably go ahead and paint this whole hood. All right, so now that the hood can shut, now I'm going to work on the cold air intake. So I need to make some kind of mount. That way I can hold it down, keep it from moving. So I need to make something just to be able to hold a clamp. I need to make it where it don't hit the power steering pump. 
Okay, so I cut out this piece of metal. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bolt it right down there on the side. I'll bolt it down like that. And then I'm gonna bend a lip so I can mount it underneath this cold air intake. Okay, so I'm leaving the top at a little bit of an angle right now because I think the cold air intake will sit a little bit like that. Okay, so I changed the plans a little bit. So I'm actually going to mount the bracket on this top part instead of on the unibody like I was going to do. Because the way I had it, there wasn't going to be enough room for the filter. That bracket was going to hit the bottom here. So if I bolt it down like that, at an angle a little bit, I'll have enough room to put the filter on and clamp it down. That should work pretty good. It don't hit the power steering line at all. Okay, so I got everything bolted down. Everything seems to fit pretty good. Nothing hitting anywhere. I do wish there was a little bit more room in between the fuse box but they really ain't no other way for me to mount this. So I drilled two holes at the bottom of that bracket and got it bolted down. So I'll probably take this back off real fast and go ahead and paint that bracket and then go ahead and remount it. And then that will be finished. Now I'm not completely decided what I'm gonna do on the air conditioner lines. There ain't a whole lot of room for the lines down at the compressor. So I'm going to try to find some kind of aftermarket line that will fit there better because it's too close to the uh, power steering box. So all I got to do is hook those up and I'm going to try to hook them up to the factory Cherokee lines. So I'll have to figure out something on that but I'll probably do that sometime later. Okay, so for some reason, the last little bit I just filmed, there's no sound to it, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. So as you can see, the engine bay is completed. I got the fuse box mounted. I just made some mounts to hold that together. So everything is now in place where it needs to be. Okay, so on the interior, I did mount the gauges. So I end up just using two self-tapping screws. I had to cut just a little bit back in there to make room for the harness. Cut these top tabs off. That way the gauges will plug in. But I got them mounted and they're pretty sturdy. So since I'm using the Grand Cherokee shifter, I'm gonna have to modify the console just a little bit. Now the new shifter is quite a bit bigger than the factory one the Cherokee had. So I'm going to have to modify this. I was debating on whether to just build a custom console, but I may do that later on. I'm probably going to have to cut this one out. I'll take the ashtray out. But I figured I could cut that out and make some kind of plate to make it look good. So because of the shifter knob, I am going to have to move it back just a little bit, keep it from hitting the dash. Okay, so I've been trying to decide how I'm going to mount the shifter with the console. I don't want to drag this video much longer. I'm going to go ahead and bolt the shifter down. That way we can drive the Jeep. Because I'm really not for sure what I'm going to do with the console yet. And I'm going to have to mount a couple of the switches for the instrument cluster. That way the menu and all that stuff will work. Uh, I'm probably going to have to mount it underneath one of these controls here. I mean there are several different ways you could do it. I've just not really decided what way I want to do it yet. But I want to hurry and get this video out for you guys. I know a lot of you all have been asking for part 3. second thing I got left is I got to figure out the key switch. So I'm still running the Cherokee electronics. Everything inside is still working because I just powered up the fuse box for the inside of the Cherokee. 
and I'm still using the key switch from the Hemi to start it so right now I've got two key switches and I want to convert that into one where it's just one key to do everything so I've not completely decided on that yet how I want to do it I've kind of thought about having it the regular key switch and then maybe a push button start but I'm not really decided on that yet either now the last thing I got to do is the exhaust and I'm waiting to put the three link on here before I mount the exhaust to make some more room now you guys might be able to bend the exhaust around that but I think it'll be a whole lot easier if I just go ahead and three link it and that gets rid of all these brackets makes a whole lot more room more than likely I probably could have done it without it but that would just make a sharp bend in the exhaust and I really don't want to do that and it also makes it real tight for the front drive line and I've really not decided what kind of exhaust system I'm going to run I've thought about doing dual I've even thought about just tying back into the Cherokee exhaust not really for sure on that I do have a Borla Pro XS but I will make a separate video of doing the exhaust and temporarily until I get my three link kit I just mounted the factory cross member I just cut some hose in it that way I can bolt it down enough to move it around so other than those last few things I just named uh, the hemi swaps pretty much complete so in the last video you heard it run and now in this video now that we got everything done we should be able to go ahead and drive this jeep so i'm going to start the jeep up and i'm going to put it in reverse and let's see what happens <laughs> So even just pulling up in the driveway, that made a big difference. Well, let's take it down the road and see how it does. So the Hemi swap is now complete. 
I didn't want to drive it too much yet. I just want to make sure everything's still okay. Make sure nothing getting too hot. But there's a big difference in power, which I definitely figured they would have been. So I'm really looking forward to going up in the hill now. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.